Welcome to the Anime Research Group, a show about the weird and wonderful mistake that is anime. I'm Ian. I'm Danny. I'm Freya. And this week, April Fools. This is neither of the episodes we have pr- promised you. And instead, we're going to chat about noted trash anime, Karasu Tengu Kabuto. And when we say noted... <laughs> like, no one talks about this show. There's a few reviews that are out online. There's like a few videos on YouTube that I think are just reviews. But... Nothing of quality. <laughs> it was made or lost. Uh, to be fair, we're not actually even talking about the show. We're talking about the one-off OVA that was made a year after the show by the manga's original author. So you've probably never heard of it, and I've never seen it, and probably never will. And when we say made, we do mean made. He directed it, yeah. storyboarded it, and wrote the screenplay himself. Yeah, so this is uh, Terasawa Buichi. Um, who, of course, is more famous for Cobra and other noted trash uh, OVA, Goku, Midnight Eye. Raven Tengu Kabuto was, an, was a manga that ran for two years from 1987 till 88, and then somehow was stretched into a 39-episode anime in 1990 to 1991 by two studios that mostly seem to do contract work, except that Nakamura Productions, one of the studios... Also apparently worked on The Hunchback of Notre Dame 2, Pocahontas 2, Aladdin King of Thieves, and The Return of Jafar. It almost seems like a shame that we are not talking about the TV series, but I definitely don't want to watch 39 episodes <laughs> uh, just, so that, just so that I can talk about what a trash career Takashi Watanabe has had. <laughs> uh, boogie pop aside, I guess. So, so how would we describe um, uh, Raven Tengu Kabuto? Because it's sort of a feudal Japan, but there's also robots and magic powers. I mean, I wouldn't describe it as like a fascinating trash pile like Goku Midnight Eye, because Goku Midnight Eye was kind of fascinating to watch on a certain level. Raven Tengu Kabuto has one standout scene, which we'll talk about, and a few good laughs at the end are just the sheer stupidity of it. But for the mostly, it's just kind of very, very, very the ultimate definition of meh. <laughs> the dub helps a little bit. Yes. I don't think it's entirely fair to just say that it's, it's meh. It's certainly not good. Uh, I think, though, if you've seen Goku Midnight Eye, more than Cobra, I guess, you can definitely see the similarities. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> not just in the naked women for no good reason. <laughs> This is an anime about an 80s hair metal rock star trying to save a princess from a lady who turns out to be a robot controlled by her servant. And then there's helicopters, elephant men, head crabs, and various other stupid things. We don't find out she's a robot until the last couple of minutes when it suddenly turns out that her servant, the um, engineer, has actually been the main villain the whole time. Mm-hmm. It has many of the problems of like the 80s OVAs, like when we talked about Dracula last Halloween, where the show is about 50% exposition, which I find hilarious. I, I love shows when everyone is talking in exposition, just because <laughs> I just can't understand, like, did, do they not edit these things? Like, literally, the first five minutes of this OVA is... He arrives in the ruined town where that was formerly prosperous. He gets invited in by some inn. And then it's five minutes of explaining why everything has gone to shit in this place. And then we see the the villain lady arriving with some slaves. It would be nice if they could at least make the exposition good. But on the other hand, at least they never said, as you know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think the... The highlight for me is definitely the when they're they've he has rescued the princess from the uh warriors who have like the crab masks on their face mm-hmm. uh and blows up the wall well, I know actually he doesn't blow up the wall uh, the the elephant guy who is chasing him blows up the wall, but he goes down on a boat and then there is i believe it's like twenty five seconds where he's just <laughs> listing like the names of his like nine powers. Uh, and then we see like the the kanji that appears uh, related to it appear in a circle around him, and then only once he has named all nine of them <laughs> does the yes, does right. the rocks blow up and seal off um, his friend and the princess. There's a name for that um, 
Sean, right? Because it uh, shows up in a bunch of things. I don't, I, I don't remember what it is, but I, I've definitely heard it before. It's a, it's a Buddhist chant of some kind. But when we say elephant man, we don't mean a man, like a half elephant, half man. We mean a humanoid with a robot elephant head uh, that bursts out steam, steam out of his various tusks. And a, a Buddhist wheel that he uses as a you know, spinning disc launcher. <laughs> He's bayblading down everything. So one of the things that you would normally expect in these sorts of things is like um, the action to be like a high point, particularly in terms of animation. And I definitely (laughs) feel that that is not the case in this show. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Because like just sticking with this fight against, like I'm just going to keep saying Elephant Man because his name is really not important. (laughs) But he says it three separate times. I don't even remember what it is. And we watched it 10 minutes ago. I also don't remember what it is. I, I know he's. I know he said it a lot. It's uh, Raset Subo. That's it. Like you're like yes, this is going to be a great fight. They've been chasing. Now they're going to fight, and it's like, I mean, the the spinning like wheel is pretty cool, but it's not well animated. And then, except for the fact that he teleports the sword from his back sheath into his hand. Which really makes me wonder if they were simply unable to animate the motion of him reaching over to his back and pulling out his sword. Because he does that multiple times in the anime. I think it's. I think it probably looks really cool in the manga because it would just be two panels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just, it just doesn't work at all. It's, it's, it's like when you're like 10 years old and you're like playing with your friends, it's like, nuh-uh, I can teleport my sword into my hand. <laughs> You know, I'm making fun of that, and I just realized that in my first year of high school, so we're talking 11, 12, I wrote a story in which a person literally had that power. (laughs) 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 Um, But it was a a spear. And now that I think about it, the Pac-Man style superhero that I had for that was quite racist. In in terms of like, um, it was like ripping off like the idea of like the design of like a pygmy shrunken head. Well, you came here for the Raven Tengu Kabuto and you got the Ian backstory. <laughs> <laughs> he, and none of his powers were good. That's, that, that, that's, all, that's all I have to say. Like, he, he, was, a, he was an even worse character than, than Kabuto is. <laughs> I mean, Kabuto is also basically invincible. The fights are just finished in like two or three attacks. The Elephant Man never poses any danger whatsoever. Also, for some reason... In the subtitles, his power, his, like, fire snakes along the ground are called Volcano Rats. <laughs> uh, so, I, like, I assume that we were using the, uh, I assume we were listening to the uh, the Manga UK dub, but the mm-hmm. subtitles that I had that went along with it made no, were not re- related, almost enti- like, they were just, like, entirely different in so many aspects. Poor, poor quality all around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think visually there's just not really much there. The movie gives a very poor first impression as well with the character walking on the spot, which I know happens occasionally, but it's just so incredibly obvious here. Well, normally they disguise it by having the background move or at least playing with the perspective so that it works. But here it's just a straight on shot where he's like flat against the background. It's just on the spot, on the spot. I think the most impressed I was with the animation in the anime was one moment where we had like leaves blowing in the wind for a second on a straight shot. That was it. Nothing else really. There were a lot of very dodgy loops. Mm. I, I don't like. I wouldn't say like the. I would say the animation is really poor quality across the board. Uh, you can yeah. tell. Um, we decided for fun to check on Sakugaburo, and of course, nobody had clipped anything from <laughs> either the Thirteen Nine episode series or this OVA, which is a shame, but understandable. <laughs> Entirely understandable. I will say that I found the um, the like second major like um, action point. The, which I would describe as a power metal music video, uh, as like the best part of the show. Yeah, it, it it definitely is the one standout moment. I remember when we first saw this like six years ago in our anime society, and everyone in the room was just headbanging along to this out of nowhere eighties metal track with like it sounds like something that could have been done by Jam Project in a way. The action still visually isn't that interesting, but it's just 
the energy of the song really carries you through that scene like nothing else in the movie does. Like you get picked up for one brief moment and then you're really energized. Then we go back to the average thing. I, I don't know. I don't think the storyboards for that were terrible. I think there is like a solid way to animate that thing. He's being chased by the the like crab mask people, all of whom inexplicably have spotlights over their shoulder. <laughs> Like it's like they've all been like summoned to the concert, and then they're all surrounding him, and then the spotlights are just shining on him, uh, and then like it ends with him just flying away with his raven wings. That like I, that was enjoyable. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean that that's what I always look forward to when we rewatch this. But I, I, I'm gonna ask, what was everybody's favorite like piece of technology in this movie? Uh, the like spy camera that he, <laughs> the Jinai was using to spy on Kabuto as he fought the mechanical horse mm. because it's it's connected via a pipe direct from like the camera directly to his eye from which Kabuto can send flames through danger 5 style so it's it's not like fantastic technology but like that 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 use of the technology is masterful as for me i think my favorite bit is so, you have a traditional Japanese castle. I imagine if you've seen some anime set in that period, you know what they look like. But in this case, the top level of the castle is also a helicopter that can separate from the castle and just fly away. So we have a scene where we think the princess, who's called Raname, uh, has escaped, and she's like on the ocean, but all of a sudden there's the top of a castle hover flying above her with only a single propeller, and it sucks her in and with like a water water wart water vortex oh it's so stupid also all the robots have like of course self-destruction bombs built into them that that's also what kills jenai in the end when kabuto stabs lady the evil lady and then she blows up i i honestly i think that the, the you don't watch this show because it's like good you watch it just because like the every few minutes there's just an idea that comes out of nowhere Ian, we haven't even mentioned the crucifixion well, that started that out of the ordinary. They did do that in um, <clears throat> this period of time in Japan. They, which they learned from the Christians. <laughs> yes. But it's just like, you know, like you have, like you're playing like a role playing game or something, and you have like that one really silly idea, and everyone at the table laughs, and then you just go with it. Mm. That seems to have been the writing process that Buichi <laughs> went through when they, they just decide to crucify his friend um, Kazuma. Uh, who was with the prisoner for no good reason. There's the self-destruction bombs. There's the time when the evil lady strips naked and throws her clothes at the at Kabuto, and suddenly the clothes <sighs> have like magic powers to, to hypnotize him and put him into hell. Oh, yeah. Like, I kind of get what they were doing with the naked, because, like, she's a witch, let's make, make her naked, is an unfortunate but not uncommon choice. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, all of the, if you're a woman in this, so yeah, you're either there to be rescued or you're an evil witch and your sexuality is your yeah. evil power. If you're one of the two women in the OVA. And also you're a robot built by a <laughs> Yeah, those are literally the two women in the OVA. There's the evil witch and then there's the princess who's in another castle. Like her design, the design of the witch is actually quite similar to the one of motor of naked motorbike lady from uh, Goku Midnight Eye, mm. when I think about it. The crucifixion scene also gives us our best line of dialogue. <laughs> yes. At least in the English. I committed no crime. That was a great crime, but it's you who committed it. Followed by, traitor, you die. <laughs> traitor, you die, yeah. My, my favorite personal line readings come from, um, I think, the flashback scene, where we see Kabuto once used to live in the castle, and he like had a thing with the princess, and also the princess bodyguard. He was like friends with him. And... They're in like the dojo, and then some random guy shows up and insults his lord, and it's just the way that guy speaks. Of course, it's no surprise that you can all be beaten by a child still nourished by his mother's milk. How can you bear this mountain of physical and spiritual shame? I've got to make every syllable sound interesting. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just a line that goes something along the uh, goes something along the lines of um, as soon as he put his hands on his weapon, like the duel had started. <laughs> uh, <sighs> honestly, I don't. I can't hate this show. Like we've no, seen it now no. like four or five times. The most recent time was a few years ago, and it's just it's not good by any stretch of the imagination. I wouldn't even really say it's in the so bad it's good territory. Like, I don't think it's there. 
but it is like consistently entertaining just in how ludicrous it is i think it has a little bit to do with almost just how forgettable a lot of the episode is uh, the i think it has a lot to do with almost how forgettable a lot of the show is so that every time when we watch it again after two years we're always surprised afresh by all the stupidity like the fireball going through the spyglass or the giant mechanical horse where he needs to keep moving the um, yes. levers back and forth to move it because it's not memorable so you forget about it but then when you, you remember that oh yeah this was really funny to watch and then you watch it again and you see it again and it's still so stupid it does work better if you wait three years and not yes. like half a year like we did the first time <laughs> No, that was yeah, yeah. too soon. So, so yeah, we recommend that you watch it and then leave it to, to settle for a few years before <laughs> watching it again. Yeah. And if you don't want to watch the entire thing, just check out the music scene from the middle of the OVA, because that's really the, the only part worth watching. I noticed on my anime list that it only has one review. That review is 3 out of 10. And that seems about <laughs> right. Well, is that for the series or the OVA? Uh, it was for the OVA for sure. Okay. The problem is, is that the the unlike say Mars of Destruction or Skelter Heaven, the animation is just bad. It's not ridiculously funny levels of funny bad. Yeah, I I, I feel that Terasawa Buichi, um, he is going to be remembered for Cobra and not for this, and he should be very <laughs> thankful for that. <laughs> I still wonder why he decided to make this himself. Like, was he so unhappy with the original 39 episode anime that he was like, you know what, I'll do it myself with Blackjack and Hookers. And then he made this. Uh, and then he didn't have time to animate the Blackjack or the Hooker. <laughs> you can see that he's trying occasionally to do things that he thinks are cool from other yeah. like films, like the mm. silent moment near the beginning when Thingy um, is about to blow wind and free all her all of the uh yeah. villain slaves yeah i think this is why we don't hate it is there is a sincerity here like in, like we see that sincerity also in like mars of destruction and stuff there's definitely like a vision here it's just impossible for him to realize it while doing the things he is doing i don't know how much more we have to say i definitely feel this is a good thing to watch at least yes. once well, I I definitely say if you, have, you grab some friends and watch it with them on your own, this might not be that entertaining. But if you have some people to watch it with you, you have a, like a, have a buichi night, like get some <laughs> get a few be, get a few beers, get the, the one of the Cobra OBAs, get Goku Binai, get this. You'll have a good time. Whatever method of intoxication you prefer, like don't go into this looking for Sakuga. Don't go into this looking for a great voice performance. Don't look go into this looking for great writing. Don't go into this looking for. <laughs> Really, anything of quality. <laughs> not go into this looking for character, and if you want to see vague gesturing at themes, sure. <laughs> if you love exposition, though, well, it's kind of mediocre exposition, <laughs> but there is a lot of it. <laughs> there is so much exposition. <laughs> so yeah, we we wanted to do at least something um, because obviously we haven't done uh, an episode now in quite a while. It's not that we haven't recorded an episode. We definitely recorded uh, the Die Buster episode that hasn't been edited yet. Yes, this, this is on me. I've been quite busy with my um, university stuff, and uh, April likely won't be any less busy, but once April is done, we'll, ba we'll, we'll definitely get back in a regular groove, and Die Buster is probably coming out somewhere in the midst of April. We'll be back. This definitely wasn't uh, the hiatus that we planned. We we thought that it was just going to be cutting back to bi-weekly episodes, but then it's it, it's, it was been a, a surprisingly full couple of months. And yeah, we we, do, we just kind of wanted to have something done, even if it was just this. <laughs> so we are the Anime Research Group, a theoretically weekly podcast that has not came out <laughs> since February. Why not listen to one of our older episodes? If you'd like to tell us what you thought of this episode or suggest something for future episodes, you can follow us on Twitter at research underscore anime or drop us an email at researchanime at gmail.com. And we'll see you in the Die Buster episode.
Traitor, you die! <laughs>